Dar es Salaam is where I pretty much grew up. My childhood was in Dar es Salaam until the age of 20. And uh, I finished my high school over there before I moved out. At the age of one, one and a half year old, I was, um, I was diagnosed with polio. Oh, wow. And uh, pretty much from my neck down was totally paralyzed. New York is where I first l had my close interaction with the community. Uh, in a sense that in Toronto, I, my, my community involvement was very limited to volleyball. So we flew to Daytona Beach. And when we came to Daytona Beach, there was the, that was the weekend of um, Daytona 500. Okay, good. So now we're in Orlando. And um, obviously you, had, you started having some interaction with the community uh, in New York. And now what was your interaction in Orlando? So while I was in New York, um, when I when I joined um, Union over there, Marhum Liakas Fazel was the chairman of uh, Union, and I got to know him, and he got to know me pretty well. And when I moved to Orlando, he had moved as well. So at that time, um, Marhum Mebub Manji had moved here as well, and. He him and Brother Lia Marum Liaka and Marum Jafar Abdul and these were the uh, people who had moved at that time, along with um, Brother Gulam Gulambai Deuji, who was who was a pioneer uh, of Orlando Jamaat, and some other elders of the community at that time. I remember Brother Ali Virji and Brother Raza Jafar and so on and so forth. Um, at that time, they were kind of. Um, there was a there was a conversation going on about how to make this community put this community on a map, uh, and uh, so the first thing I remember Merhum Mebub Manji did was he wanted to make some um, constitution amendments so that you know for for a betterment for a, for the future of this community. And uh, through Marhum Liaqat Fazal, um, he approached me and uh, wanted my help to help him in terms of uh, um, putting together some sort of an amendments of the constitution. So I remember we used to sit and go through a few clauses. Now, I didn't know much about constitution at that time. I was mainly um, good in typing because it was part of my job. Um, and uh, so we would go, and I remember him discussing, and sometimes you have other people over there too, and you know, I was part of this conversation, and I would give my point of view, and you know. So that was the beginning of my interaction with Orlando Jamaat. And then once this amendment, amended constitution was approved, uh, Brother Mewu Manji, um, Marhum Mewu Manji, decided that he wanted to form a team. And uh, he approached me to be the secretary of the Jamaat. I was very hesitant because I had never, up until then, ever thought that I would take a position. And I didn't think it was in me to take a position. I didn't feel like I, would, I am that type of a person um, who would be um, taking some leadership position at that time. But, uh, you know, he managed to convince me and I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. I will try. So I think that's a, a interesting position. Uh, I think if you talk to a lot of younger people, they'll say that. They'll be like, I don't think this is me or this is within me or this is what I foresee myself doing. And since you were in those shoes, um, what made you change your mind? Um, first was that I just didn't know how to say no. <laughs> I was pretty much cornered um, between Marhum Mebu Manji and Marhum Nakat Fazal. And, uh, and if you know these two individuals, they are very convincing. Uh, it is very hard to say no to them. They will... Um, drive you nuts until you, you agree to them. 
But jokes aside, I think um, when I looked at that time, the community was very small, was very young. Um, they, the, the programs were happening, but the system wasn't there. I remember we used to come to mosque and then, um, you know, people over there would decide, okay, who's going to recite or who's doing this today or who's doing that. Um, there wasn't much system. And I, up until then, had lived in cities where system was the key to success in the community, whether it's Dar es Salaam, Toronto, or New York. Um, coming to Orlando was a little difficult in terms of um, going to mosque and making sure there is structured program. And the reason there wasn't structured program is because it was a very small community. But because of the influx of people who came at the first wave of migrants from New York uh, that happened, I think the community started realizing that you know we need some sort of structure, we need some sort of proper programs. And a lot of these people who had moved came from New York or came from places where there was a proper Jamaat and you know, a lot of history behind it too. So it became a little difficult. So when I looked at all that, I was like, okay, I can at least help in terms of um, putting together, uh, helping in, in, in putting together um, program or things like that. So I remember that was the, the time um, this is what I'm talking about back in 1999. That was the time the internet was becoming more and more popular. And uh, we were all excited that we set up our first email system. We were all excited with first website, you know, um, happened at that time too. So this is where I think um, with my background and being one of the youngsters in the community, I think this is what Marhum Mebu Manji and Marhum Liaquat Fazl um, wanted that perspective from a youngster. And I um, would talk to you know, people of my age, my friends, you know, who, um, who are now, obviously, we're all grown up and old now. But at that time, you, know, you get a lot of input. And when you are with your friends, you know, they, at that time, at that age, it's a different perspective than somebody mm -hmm. who's much older. So I think that, that's what I brought to the community. Other than that, I was pretty much learning on the go. Um, I didn't have any experience. I, I didn't even know how to coordinate with people. Um, uh, being a secretary, you are, um, you are the front person to answer all the communication. Trust me, I was the last person anybody wanted to talk because I didn't have much of a clue. So, you know, um, my interaction, my, my contribution to the community at that time was sort of limited to um, bringing that young person's perspective. And, uh, and I had a few friends who had moved from New York with me. Uh, we would constantly discuss and uh, I would get ideas from them. Uh, sometimes I would get help from them. Um, of how to make things better and I would bring their suggestion to the table and uh, you know the rest of the committee were a generation older than me um, would take that uh, that you know anything that would make things better so that was pretty much my uh, interaction with uh, with the new with the committee at that time and this was between 1999 to 2001 I think uh, there is one very important thing that you have mentioned is that uh, if you want your perspective to be heard or to be implemented, then you have to be part of that system. You have to sort of bring the change uh, from within, um, and your conversations with uh, you know your friends, your peers and your own understanding of where you saw the community uh, sort of drove you towards taking that decision of joining the committee and uh, bringing about change from, from within. Yeah, absolutely. I, I truly believe that if you... It's, it's much easier to sit at the back and say, this is what should be done, rather than getting in the front and being part of uh, doing it. But if you truly believe that you know you want to help, then then go there and 
you know, see how you can help. Uh, and if, if, if there is your perspective that you want to, you know, you want to bring it to the table, then yeah, bring it to the table. If, if majority feels that, if people feel that there is a value to it, there is no reason not to accept it. Um, but, but you have to have it within you to do it. Um, don't sit at the back and just, you know, uh, give suggestions without helping how to implement those suggestions. I think that that's very tough for the people to do, um, but you know, step up and help. And it doesn't have to be at the managing committee level. It can be at, at subcommittee level, it can be at volunteer level, but you know, be part of it. Yeah, I think you've highlighted a lot of uh, interesting points there. So that was your term as secretary, correct? Yes. And then what happened after that? So after I finished my term, as a secretary, I was, uh, like any other youth, I was more interested in sports. And um, I was gravitated more towards over there. That's where all my friends were. And um, up until then, Union Sports Club had done two volleyball tournaments, very successful. Um, but then, you know, we were at, uh, I remember we were at a sports festival in Dubai and we were very inspired that if we can do something like that, maybe not at that scale, but we can do something like a multi-sport festival in Orlando. And um, we came back and I joined, few of us, we, we joined as part of the managing committee. Um, this was 2001, 2002. And uh, we had our first uh, sports festival in 2002 and that was commemorating five years of Union because we had started Union Sports Club when we moved here in 97. So 2002 was a fifth year anniversary and it was a multi-sport festival. Um, and uh, so I served between 2001 to 2007, 2008, uh, four years as a secretary, two years as chairman. Um, and that was pretty much my um, you know, my motivation because I was part of the playing uh, member as well and uh, my interest at that time was more towards sports than towards Jamaat. Now, at the same time, in Jamaat we used to volunteer. We always used to help out and volunteer. In fact, uh, during that time, HIC volunteering was done by Union Sports Club. So being part of Union Sports Club automatically made us uh, available to do uh, volunteering at the at the Jamaat level. So it was a good uh, partnership between HIC and Union Sports Club at that time and uh, it really worked for, for the few years that we were doing it. So this um, sort of reminds me of the conversation I had with uh, Riyaz uncle. He had a similar uh, view in terms of uh, being involved with union and then sort of coming to the Jamaat. So what is your take on having a sports club and the importance of it and how I guess it sort of transitions you into other more higher responsibilities? If First of all, I, in my opinion about having a sports club or having sports within communities extremely high. I think it is very important. I'm of a true believer that having a multi-purpose hall or a gym is as important as having a mosque um, because that's where you're going to get people. Today, um, and, and you know, it's not just here. Any communities worldwide you can go. There are more people at the gym for a sporting event than at the mosque for namaz, you know. So I personally believe that, you know, there are ways of, of uh, putting these two together, if possible, whereby you can, um, you can have your sport event and you can even, in, you know, integrate the, the, the religious part of it too. I remember seeing this back in New York. Um, we used to have volleyball tournament in Ramzan. And every Friday, uh, when we have the tournament, we all skipped mosque. Well, let me take it back. We didn't skip mosque. We went for iftar, and then we left. 
So we would skip the entire you know, rest of the program in mosque. But I remember the people over there who were our leaders at Union Sports Club New York um, used to emphasize that we are not going to start until we have dua recited at the ground. So we used to have a dua recited every Friday before we start uh, the game. And it was fully attended by the, by the youths. In fact, there were more people in that dua than there were in regular days in, in the mosque. And that was my first interaction about it. And, and you know, having spoken to some of the elders of the community, whether uh, in uh, Vancouver or in Minnesota, where there are these gyms and multipurpose hall, I remember them telling us that, you know, they themselves, and I'm talking about religious leaders and community leaders telling us how important the multipurpose hall has been for them in, that, in those communities because it has bring a lot of youths in there. It has bring a lot of ladies. It's bring a lot of people. And because of that, the, the attendance at the mosque has gone up. So I believe uh, very strongly that we need a balance. It can't be just one or the other. You can't just have sport and no religion, but you, at the same time, you can't have just religion and no sport. It has to be hand in hand together.